Um, I just have a question. Yeah. So for the traps, do we, um, so you said that they're going to be deployed for five days then? So we just put the trap out, either do the pitfall one or do one that's like hanging, I guess, right? Both, both, right? Oh, so, both. So, you're, so you're both, both going to do a pitfall. Every every pitfall will, will be a pitfall, or excuse me, excuse and, me, let me say that again. Every array will be a pitfall and a sticky trap. They might not be exactly next to each other, but but you should have four pitfalls and four stickies. Okay, sounds good. And there'll be um, like, so one per zone or are we going to have? Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Yeah, so again, it, ideally we would have, say, three per zone. We'd have some replication per zone, but because of cost and logistics and stuff, we couldn't we couldn't send you guys that many. But so you guys are going to do a representative one, and you guys will get the idea. But just realize if 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 we were doing this as um, you know a, a robust report, it is a robust report. But but if if we were if we were if we didn't have the constraints of being stuck at home during coronavirus and couldn't send you stuff, you guys would have replicates per each zone. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. For my project, I have um, really dense uh, vegetation covering all of the soil. So like really big bushes. Okay. So I have to so I have to like cut the bushes to get to the soil for the pitfall trap. Where should I put my cut or my hole? Uh, I would, so yeah, I, I don't want you to get in trouble and destroy your, uh, destroy your, your parents' backyard or their prize azalea or whatever that it is. So I would, I would, um, in that case, you, you, you probably don't have to do the, the cap, right? So if we can imagine if, if, if you were sampling literally inside shrubbery, I, I mean, as long as you didn't think that the branches were going to fall into this trap. Or, 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 you know, even if, if a little branch fell in, that's fine. As long as there wasn't a ton of little needles and stuff falling in this, I would just, I would just put this trap under and not worry about the over, because there's not going to be a coyote or a dog that's going to go in there if you have that, if you have that, you know, dense shrubbery around it. So what I would do is I would just sort of, I would go in, um, I wouldn't, you know, go into the middle of the, of the shrub where I have to break a bunch of branches. I would just go, you know, a foot or so inside. Maybe you could, Maybe you could lift it up a little bit with one hand, do a little bit of digging, and then put this guy underneath. The most important thing is going to be, like I said, and when I do my how-to video, um, I'll show you guys this. But but if if you can imagine, if we're looking straight down, this this plastic edge has to be really really flush with the soil. So that's more important than than how deep into the into the shrub it is. And and so if it's so far in that you cannot guarantee that this backside sorry if you cannot guarantee that this backside is is you know soil right up to the edge then i would i would come a bit farther out i wouldn't go that deep does that make sense yes thank okay, you cool other other intro questions or general questions you guys have hey morning this is tyler kasserick what's up dude I was wondering if these um, sticky traps have an attractant on them. Oh, great question. These do not. So, so the stuff that we use specifically is just the plastic and the tangle foot. I mean, I, I suppose I suppose there probably is some smell to the tangle foot, but but specifically, what Tyler is talking about is a lot of times, which if you drive around, say, in Ventura County or other agricultural areas, you'll see these things. Sometimes they're shaped in like a triangle or a or a, a um, like a, a tube type shape, um, and and those will be for say a particular invasive moth or something. A lot of times they'll put attractive pheromones. Uh, it, it, they will impregnate a, a smell or a scent or a hormone or whatever inside the trap to because they're specifically looking for um uh, organisms of concern these traps are not that way these are these are just um they would only encounter things that are um attracted uh, or, or that, that encounter it the one thing that that does happen I have to be honest is these are yellow right and so there are certain insects that do i don't know if any insects are afraid of yellow but there certainly are some insects that are more attracted to yellow so if you guys have worn a yellow shirt, sometimes in springtime, you'll see a bunch of flowers. You'll sometimes see bees come up and they're like, hey, are you a flower? Um, and so so some critters uh, 
uh, might be attracted to the color, but there's no um, olfactory or, or um, volatile chemicals that are particularly attracting anybody with these. If you wanted to do research to do that, there are companies that you could order these traps from and say, can either you would send them the substance or they, or they might be able to add it in, but that's an additional cost. Are there, are there, so if, if the students can't get this, like the glycol, the, the antifreeze or, or something to, to the additive for the, the pitfalls, is there something else that they might be able to use other than water? I, I, um, yeah. So, I mean, I probably wouldn't use water just because it'll, it, it doesn't necessarily kill the dudes. So what I would do is I would put salt. So if, if you really, really didn't have anything, if you guys were, were out in the middle of nowhere and you, and you, you couldn't, you, somebody in your house actually might have Corona and you literally can't go to the store or something. Um, I would use salt water. So I would take, I would take water and pour just a ton of salt in it. And that still might not kill things, but most of our terrestrial insects, that'll be enough to like, uh, and then they'll die. And so, and so that, that's not ideal. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't have water and I couldn't go out, I would probably use a vodka or, or some kind of like, you know, some kind of alcohol based substance. The issue with both the water, even if it's salt water or vodka or, or some such thing is it'll evaporate pretty quick. And so if you guys do have to, if you are, if you are constrained and can only use water, you're going to want to check that, um, certainly in the morning and probably midday and late in the afternoon. And, and you might need to, to, uh, you know, top it off. You might need to add some, um, uh, liquid to it. Um, but, uh, so, so the liquid's going to do two things. One, the liquid is going to, is, is going to make sure that when the, the recording has stopped, Oh, Sorry, the recording stopped. Uh, so the the liquid is if I'm 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 bug dude here I'm bug dude whoa and I fall in here. If uh, particularly we see this with um, spiders because they tend to they tend to um, go like this when they fall and they tend to increase their surface area and they can sometimes not uh, you know the surface to have this such that the surface tension keeps them from going into the liquid they can sometimes get out and so the um, the antifreeze has a different surface tension and they usually uh, will fall through. But so that liquid is one gonna, hopefully once they fall in here, they die and they don't get out. Um, and so one, it's, a, it's essentially a trap. And then two, it's a, a thing that's gonna kill them. And then three, it's gonna act as, the, the, the antifreeze will actually act as a bit of a preservative. So if we're gonna archive these guys, um, when we're done, so if we got something really rare or something, we take them at the end. Is we take them out of the antifreeze, kind of you know, drip them off, wipe them off, and then put them into alcohol or or formalin or or whatever it would be. Typically, just alcohol. Um, but 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 even if we don't do that, the the antifreeze itself will serve as something of a preservative. And and why that's important is that um, as you guys will see. Oh, I don't know, Brent. Have you guys talked about museum specimens and 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 fixing and things like that in this class yet? It doesn't matter. He's he's not on. But so so um, uh, preserve preserving is a the one thing you guys need to be aware of. I mean, not so much in this since our our main focus here is biomass, but but we will try to do a little bit. But but um, uh, one we we don't want the substance the critter to degrade. Right, so we don't want it to to be eaten or eaten by animals or bacteria or whatever. So we want to be able to see the structures if we're trying to identify it uh, uh, taxonomically, etc. If we're trying to do something like a genetic analysis, we want to make sure that the DNA doesn't degrade, you know, that that type of thing. Um, but but many times the the historic substances that we have used to preserve um, to preserve the organisms actually will end up changing something about the critter that, are, that is diagnostic. And the classic one would be the color. So some critters, we really need to look at the, the, the blueness of their belly or, or the, the colors of their, of their feathers or whatever. But yet the preservative substances we use might actually take that out. And, and, uh, and, and, and not, not only that, but just sometimes just killing a critter will change its color. So the classic would be things like um, uh, a sailfish, billfish, um, are, are rainbow. They li literally look like a rainbow on the side of their body. But as soon as you kill them and take them out of the water, they, they just look like silver fish. 
So, um, so for all those reasons, the ideal thing would be antifreeze. If you don't have it, some kind of alcohol. If you don't have that, I guess I would try salt water. Awesome. Cool. Any other questions for Dr. A? Yes, I have a question. There's no possible way I can use like vegetable oil, coconut oil, or like syrup or anything like that I can use from uh, So I think it'd be cool to try. Um, so if you want to try it, that's cool. I would probably, if you want to do that, I maybe would do a couple extra traps. Using the coconut oil or the syrup will attract a ton of ants or attract other birds or things. So it'd be interesting to see if it would work purely from a logistics standpoint, but I think it's highly likely that you would get a, um, a, uh, a, a biased result. We, we'd get like a million times more ants or something like that. Um, but, but it's, but you could maybe try diluting it if you had, if, you know, if you put a little bit of coconut oil or something like that, I guess, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd probably use more, I, if you have vegetable oil, I'd probably do that over the coconut or syrup. But yeah, I think like Dr. A said, if, if we're not sure if it still might have an attractive, maybe you, maybe like one of your, maybe you do one with best diluted vegetable oil and then you have like salt water you know, like a half meter away or something like that, if you can, and see if there's any difference. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Other questions? Awesome. Okay, guys, so I'll, I'll uh, tur log off in a sec. And again, uh, as soon as it mellows out, I'll, I'll try to have a video up by uh, this afternoon or so that I'll send to Brenton and he can send to you guys just to, to see stuff. So again, remember our, our goal for next week is for you guys to have have um, deployed for five days your sticky traps and your uh, pitfall traps, and hopefully at that point you guys will have you guys will have had them deployed and bring them in, and then we can talk about how we're going to process them next week. Cool. Yeah, I was just gonna before um, we sign off. Thank you, Doctor. That was awesome. Thank you. That was super cool. I just wanted to, so for next week. I think you guys, if you haven't started your veget surveys with your new quadrats um, try to do that as well in your zones and then deploy your sticky traps hopefully you get them um, by today I think most everyone should get them by tomorrow so if you if you can at least deploy them by Sunday then you should have those five days by by next Friday when we meet again it'd be cool so what's due next week we're not gonna have that much due I think it'd be cool for you guys to take a photo of your setup and be be cool and creative with it. You know, if you if you want to try the the rose stem, I think that's that's really cool and creative. Um, or you know, if you don't have any, you know, if you have wire from a hanger, like Doctor A said, or something else, you know, be really creative. I think that's kind of one of the fun things that I've noticed with this class, even with those quadrats and stuff like that. There's been a lot of creativity which is really cool to see. So take a photo of your, of your trap. Uh, you, don't have, you don't have to do like one of every zone, but kind of take a, a photo of, of your, your setup. And I'll just put another assignment up, but all you have to do is, is just kind of take a photo and, and submit it. If you want to, these are the things that Emily wants you guys to post on to the ESRM Instagram, um, which are super cool. So if you guys are into that, please do that. Um, and then I just wanted to reiterate, photos, uh, take a photo of the setup, make sure to label your cards. So if you notice on some of Dr. Oh, right, Dr. Yeah. A's labels, he would say like, you know, he's at Ormond Lagoon and site four or whatever. So make sure you have zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. Cause once you put the saran wrap over it, um, and you might just mix them up and be like, oh shit, I'm not sure which zone this is. So Yeah, I'll, I'll go over that when I do the how-to video, but just make sure that when you guys do that, you only label one side. So just a key thing for our data analysis, you'd want to write the date and 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 the site name, but just on, on, on one side, not both. Because when we do the entering, there's a part of the data sheet that says the label side and the back side. So one is one is blank and one has your notation on it. And then, and, and I just wanted to um, restate that Dr. A said kind of do like a pre-run. So if you if you are somewhere where it's 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 windy or whatever, kind of do your setup, hang it without the without peeling 
the wax paper off and see if it's sturdy enough, you know, for an hour or so before you deploy it. Cause you know, we only have four of the, every person has four. So if you, the, if the wind blows it off and it sticks to the, the dirt and it's just covered in dirt, you're kind of screwed. Right. So field science. Yeah. <laughs> so try to, so do a little pre-run beforehand. Um, other than that, uh, I think, I think that's it for today. If there's no more questions, we're going to,